How's it going, everybody? This is Alan coming at you uh, with a necromancer bone uh, guide. Um, I'm going to go over how to level um, general gameplay and kind of what my thoughts are on it. Also, some alternatives. We're going to go over maybe a little bit of a corpse explosion and how to kind of segment the character into in-game Project Diablo 2. So one thing I definitely want to go ahead and point out is I already died one time. I'm going to go ahead and play that clip right now. I mean, we can farm Nightmare Bale relatively easily, actually. Yeah, so pretty much uh, I died to Stygian dolls that were off the screen, even though they were FHR locked. It was a known bug in the game. I just happened to be one of the first people to test that out, I guess. Um, but I don't want you guys to stray away from the build thinking that you're just going to get one shot by stuff all the time. Um, that's really not the case. The build is actually pretty tanky, pretty defensive. Um, so yeah, we did die on our level 82 Necromancer, but you know, we go again. I'm level 78 right now, but I've already kind of got my build mapped out and I'm sitting a lot stronger right now. So let's go ahead and jump right into the build and let's go ahead and talk about leveling first. Okay, so basically the one of the best things about this build is that you don't need to respect the entire time you're leveling. This is exactly how it's going to go. Basically, you're gonna put all your points into teeth as much as you can as you level. Now, an extremely, extremely important thing to note here is that teeth gains 25% magic damage bonus from your bone armor, bone spear, and bone spirit um, for its synergies. So, basically, as you level up, you're gonna put all your points into teeth from level one to level 18. Now, when you get extra points, you can go ahead and throw one into bone armor, um, or you can opt to put one into clay golem, whichever one you choose. Clay golem might be a little bit stronger, um, just because you're not gonna, when you get radiment quest, you're not gonna be able to put more into teeth. Once you hit level 18, it is actually more beneficial for you to go ahead and put your points into bone spear instead of teeth. The reason being, is because the 25% magic damage per level bonus that you get for teeth is actually stronger than putting points into teeth once you hit level 18. I know it doesn't make any sense, but actually putting points into bone spear is gonna give you better single target damage at level 18. It's also going to give you better damage on your teeth. So it is much, much, much better way to spend your points. Now, um, Basically, you're going to keep uh, maxing out Bone Spear until you unlock Bone Spirit, okay? Um, bone Spirit is going to be your go-to single target spell with your AoE uh, and your normal spell being Teeth. Um, now, once you hit Izual in Act 4, you're going to have two skill points. Um, you're not going to be able to put them in Bone Spear. You can either do a couple things here. You can go ahead and opt to put a couple points into Clay Golem and then one into Golem Mastery. You might be able, you might put one point into Blood Warp so you can get around a little bit quicker. Or if you just want more damage, you can go ahead and put two points into Teeth. Maybe you want to put some into Bone Armor. Honestly, I went ahead and put a point into Golem Mastery and Blood Warp because I was already doing plenty of damage at the time. Um, you're going to have to make that decision for yourself. Okay, so basically right now you might be like level 30. You finally have your bone spirit and you're leveling with teeth. Um, basically at this point, you're going to be putting all your points into bone spirit. You're maxing out your bone spirit. You're going to be maxing out your bone spear and then you're maxing out your bone armor as you level. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, um, but that's exactly how you're going to level with this build. Okay, so now let's go over where to put your skill points once you once you have um, already put all your points and all your synergies, okay? So you're gonna get to here right around level 78-ish because I just got to this point on this character. Um, so basically you're gonna max all these four out 
And then here's what I chose to do. You have you have a lot of choice here on what you what you can decide you want to do. I went ahead and put a point into Decrepify. The reason why I did this is if I get into a pack of monsters, it gets a little dicey. I can go ahead and throw a Decrepify on them to kind of slow things down a little bit. I only put one point into it, so it's not really doing that much. But in my opinion, it's worth going ahead, going ahead and investing a point over into Decrepify. Now, um, here's what you can also do. Now, I should have gone ahead and put a one point into Bone Wall. I haven't done this yet. I will be putting one point into Bone Wall just so I can go ahead and if I get into a dicey situation, you can just kind of Bone Wall in front of you, kind of help save your life. Um, so let's go over the um, late game points for this build. So we've already put a point into Decrepify for our curses. So now we're going to be looking over at the summoning tab. Now, there's two things you can do here. Um, option one is you put the rest of your points into revives. Revives are incredibly strong right now, especially Act 5, um, Moon Lords, Blood Lords, Hell Lords, and Death Lords. Um, they are very, very strong revives. They do a ton of physical damage. Um, honestly, the rest of my points are going to go into revives because I think revives are too strong to pass up. Um, maybe you have a ton of gear and you don't really care about the damage from revives. You could go a golem build, so you could start putting points into golem mastery and then have like a wall of golems to kind of tank for you. It's probably a little bit safer, but honestly, I would just put the rest of your points into revives. They're it's so strong. It's in my opinion, um, I wouldn't even mess with golems. Um, another, I guess a third option you could do is you could just start putting points into your curse to make your curse really strong. Um, this is also another safe route to go. You could put 10 points into curse mastery and then you could decrepify and weaken targets. Um, again, this is all up to you. This is giving you choice on how you want to, you know, scale your character into end game. I'm just going to be choosing to go into revives. I've tested it on the beta and I'm telling you revives are going to give you a ton of damage. Okay, so I want to go ahead and show you guys a really quick tip on how to get a very good early game wand. Um, so what you're going to do is we're going to shop at Drognan and act to normal mode. Now what you're going to do is you're going to join a game and basically you're going to go ahead and hit tab and check the map. Uh, we want the exit of Act 2 to be next to Drognan. So we can see here that this isn't in the right spot. We want it to be over here. So we're going to go ahead and need to make a new game. Um, and basically, you're simply just going to keep doing this until we can see right here that the exit is over at Drognan. All right. So now, be now begins the fun part of uh finding a wand so what we're gonna do is you're basically gonna run out of town and then you're gonna run back into town okay. click on drognan and you're only going to look at the bone wands the reason why you're only looking at bone wands is because this is the only wand that he sells that can roll two sockets so what we're looking for here is either three to teeth or three to bone spear like i said that's up to you i prefer to use teeth i don't think that bone spear is that much stronger than teeth um, so yeah, so basically you're just going to keep exiting the town and you're going to enter back in the town Hello. and then you're just going to click on Drognan and then pray that he has a wand with three to teeth on it. Now it okay. may take you a long time to get one with three to teeth. You can opt for two to teeth if it rolls two sockets and then just, you know, come back to it and eventually get another, uh, a different one. Um, like, so here we just found a plus two to teeth wand right here. Um, we would go ahead and just buy this, add two sockets to it if we wanted to. Um, and this would be sufficient enough for us. Um, because what we're going to be doing is making this wand right here. So with a dole and an IO, this makes a white wand, which is going to give us three to teeth, 20 faster cast rate. We're giving some extra damage to the bone armor. Um, a little bit of vitality, magic damage reduction. So this pretty much has it all. Um, as well as that replenished life. So a really great early wand to get um, before you end up getting like a Hoto or anything like that. I also do want to mention as a side note, whenever you're shopping wands at Drognan or even Akara, 
It's actually good to go ahead and look for a wand with any kind of mana per kill on it. One of the best ways to level as this build is to get a two socket helmet with a Neph and a Tur rune, which is gonna give you mana per kill. Um, and then also to get a wand with any kind of mana per kill on it. Um, you can shop them fairly easily from Drognan. You're just gonna basically go through here. Here's one right here. Two to corpse explosion, four to mana after each kill. You could go ahead and level as a corpse explosion necromancer instead of teeth. And then you have uh, up to nine mana per kill right here. Um, just from shopping Drognan and you're gonna have use a lot less mana potions as you level. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over the gear and kind of how I play the build. Now, right now I'm using Trang Set. Trang Set is a great way to kind of transition into that early part of late game until you get some like super end game GG gear. Um, yeah, Trank set is going to be giving us 25% damage reduction with the full set. This is huge. This is going to keep us alive when we get hit. Um, it's also giving us 50 to all resistances and every single piece of armor. Um, well, most of them have an additional um, resist that they give. So I'm getting lightning on the chest. We're getting cold on the belt. And the shield already comes with flat fire resist that's on it. Um... So yeah, we're getting a lot of resistances. We're getting a lot of damage reduction. And here's what it's actually also giving us. The fire mastery and fire wall is very underrated. So what we are doing is we are using teeth as our AOE and we're using bone spirit as our single target. Now, if you go into a hallways that are very tight, you can use bone spear for many doorways and very tight areas where teeth doesn't do as well. I rarely switch over to bone spear just because the damage between difference between bone spear and teeth is just not high enough for me to really care about using bone spear. That's a personal preference. You're going to need to decide what you like to use. Um, but yeah, the firewall ability actually does 2,600 damage per second. When you're, fighting an act two hell mode and you're also fighting um an act three hell mode there are some magic immunities um and what you can do is you can throw a firewall on them so you're doing fire damage you're doing magic damage and then whenever we get our revives we're doing physical damage so we're doing physical fire and magic um so we're not really going to be locked out of any immunities in the game we're going to be able to progress and kill pretty much any monster out there Okay, so let's just go over some quick gameplay footage. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick pit run um, and kind of show you guys how easy it is um, to kind of just play this build.
So real quick, I do want to go over the best places to farm um, on this build. Now, there are multiple different level 85 areas. Now, one thing I want to show you right here, look at the magic immunes. It's practically zeros across the board. The best places, in my opinion, um, for this build is as soon as you hit the hell mode, just run pits for a long time. Pits give you a ton of experience. They're really easy to run. Just spam teeth inside there and you're going to be okay. You do need to watch out for the archers inside the pits. Um, I also really like to run Stony Tomb. Um, some of the monsters in there are a little bit magic resistant. The skeletons are a little magic resistant. Um, Chaos Sanctuary. Uh, and once you get some gear, if you get some resistances and some damage reduction, Chaos is going to be fine. Um, also, uh, this build is going to transition into tier one maps quite well. Um, and then we're going to go over a later video, uh, later guide in a later video on how to transition to full in game tier three maps. Um, so yeah, I hope this helped and, um, good luck with, uh, getting your high runes. <laughs>